Good evening, everybody. Master Guns here. Uh, tonight's video is going to be on zenithal highlighting. Um, I talked about doing a video on this a couple nights ago and finally getting around to doing it. So I hope uh, everybody who um, asked for it on Facebook and likes the idea um, gets uh, some useful information out of this. All right. So um, you guys have probably been seeing a lot of the cav stuff that I've been working on. This is a, a Tiger Cav that I finished for my Crimson Thunder Mercenary unit um, just the other night. And if you notice there on the barrel how the, the lighter green shades back into the darker green, but it's still kind of blended together with the, uh, the highlights on the upper edges. Um, this is all done with a technique called Zenithal Shading. Uh, and that's just kind of a fancy way of saying uh, you're overemphasizing the highlight colors on... Um, uh, certain focal points on the miniature itself. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that tonight. All right, so um, uh, the basics of it are essentially you're going to start with a ideally a black base coat. I prefer to work with a black base coat only because uh, I like to play with shadows uh, and I like to really push contrast on my minis because I feel like it makes them pop more, especially when they're on the table. Uh, I very seldom ever paint anything purely for display. Um, so whenever I'm painting something, it's designed to look its best at arm's distance uh, or what we would call tabletop distance. So uh, tonight we're going to be showing how to do it on a Fire Drake Cav. Um, so this is a metal mini available from Talon Games. Um, one of the uh, three or four metal minis they have now. And uh, it's just, I mean, as you can see, zoom in here on it. Uh, it's just a really cool looking mech. Uh, it is Battletech scale. So all you Battletech guys out there, if you like the way it looks, um, it does scale well with Battletech. Let me see if I have something here that I can use as a reference. There we go. All right, so there's a, uh, a not Warhammer. Um, so as you can see, they scale really well. It would make a good 75, 80 ton mech. So, um, yeah, so we're going to be doing it on that one tonight. Uh, I'm going to be doing it in the scheme for my, uh, my Nimiton Guard, which is another cab force that I am uh, currently building for my Terrans. So, uh, we'll get going shortly as soon as I get past a couple of the basics. All right, so like I said, black base coat is what I prefer to do. You can go dark gray um, if you prefer, but... Uh, Black primer is typically what I like to use. Um, you would then go to your mid-tone. <clears throat> in this case, I found that Reaper's uh, Schwarzenwald... Let me get that to... Oh, sorry. Let me get that to focus. Uh, Schwarzenwald Gray, uh, I find, is a great mid-tone for pure black. So, again, this is part of the new uh, uh, Cav Paint series from the last Kickstarter. And then, of course, finally, just a, a basic white. Uh, I really like the Army Painter matte whites just because, A, they are matte. They're not glossy like other paint companies' whites can be. Um, and they sm they just flow incredibly well off the brush. Um, other whites can be kind of chalky, sometimes too thick. You might have to thin them, then they're too thin. Uh, this stuff's just perfect all the time. Same thing for their black, so I can't, you can't go wrong with that. Um, so... Uh, going back to primer for a second, I know there was uh, there was some concern mentioned uh, about how the Bones minis um, tend to get sticky with primer. I just want to let everybody know that Rustoleum's Americana two um, X coverage, two times coverage, flat black, excuse me, flat black primer uh, covers Bones minis without any stickiness. Goes on perfectly uh perfectly matte that's what i did all the uh the cav minis i've i've worked on so far in uh and have had no issues so you don't have to worry about brush on primers you don't have to worry about running primers through your airbrush uh even though they do make some that are specifically for that um still i find they do gum up my airbrush because i typically work with like a 0 0.003 needle which is uh pretty fine for for doing primer but i just you know i don't like to change my my needles out so anyway so for my Nimiton guard, um, I'll have to find a picture. Maybe I can throw that up with them. Uh, or maybe I have an example here. Let me see. Yeah, I do. Here we go. So this is my Nimiton guard scheme. So this is what we're going to be building up to. Uh, and this is another cab. This is a uh, Bones um, Thunderbird. So as you can see, he's a, he's a big boy. 
Uh, but yeah, the Nimiton Guard scheme is kind of an off grayish blue with uh, brown, uh, brown highlights. So this is what we're going to be working towards. All right, so uh, I talked about the black primer, so that's your foundation. Uh, first color is going to be Breon Blue. Um, the main thing to remember when doing zenithal shading is you want to start with um, pretty close to the end result color you want darkness-wise. So in this case, Breon Blue, um, it's a pretty nice saturated blue. It's got a good amount of gray in it, so that's going to show through really well. The mid-tone which is going to be the second application, is Templar Blue, all for, also from uh, Reaper as part of their, well, it's going to be part of their CAV series with this, uh, uh, the current Kickstarter that's running. Um, but it is a, a just regular Reaper color at this time. And then the final highlight color will be Ashen Blue. Um, and these are all actually, um, Reaper does a great thing that I really like, is they run their paints in triads. So it'll tell you by number um, what color order these go in so if you notice we got five six or five 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 six and then uh, ash and blue is five seven so that'll tell you right there that these three colors are all designed to work together uh, so i find that's a good measuring stick to go by so i've got my airbrush already all set up um, i've got my paints pre-mixed with the um, 50 50 mixture of paint to um, airbrush thinner with a drop of flow improver uh, airbrush is fired up to 20 psi and we're going to go ahead and get started. Oh, the other uh, little trick that I've picked up recently is using these, um, let's see if I can get that to focus, using these little um, uh, tattoo ink uh, mixing cups. Uh, you can get them on Amazon, pack of like a thousand for like five bucks, uh, and they're great for mixing, just a uh, you know, paint in, and so you're not having to mix in your, in your uh, hopper. All right. See, we are good to go. All right, so the first step with zenithal highlighting, make sure we got good flow. There we go, let me open that up a little bit. Okay. All right, so what you wanna do is keep your miniature level on the, um, basically level with whatever surface you're, you're working on, um, and then work on it in 45 degree passes. And the idea is you wanna work top to bottom, working down the miniature. Concentrate less on the miniature as you get towards the bottom. The idea is you want to lay more paint um, towards the top portion of the miniature than towards the, the legs and, and whatnot. And we're going to be offsetting that by more uh, heavily exaggerating the, um, the legs and the other parts that stick out with the highlight colors later. And that's going to help add to the pop effect. And you notice how I'm not lifting the miniature up at all. I'm not worried about the paint getting underneath. I want a good, even coat, and I'll show you why. All right, so that's pretty good there. So if you can see if I can get that to focus, it's still black underneath. And so uh, once all the base colors are applied and we go to apply our wash, that black's going to be shaded to whatever color wash we're using. Uh, it'll be very, very subtle, so you probably won't be able to tell too much, um, but it will be apparent. Sometimes what I like to do is when there's areas underneath that are just really stark black, so if you, you know, you're know you playing and you have to lay the miniature down, it doesn't look weird, is I'll just give it a light dusting on the underside. So you still get the... Uh... Oh, looks like I'm almost out of paint. So you still get the, the sense of the shade that you're going for on the underside, um, but it uh, it still gives that, that shadowy effect. All right, so that is the first coat right there. I'm gonna pause the video while I clean out the hopper and load the next color, and we'll go on to the next stage. All right, guys, we're back. <clears throat> All right, so I've cleaned out the hopper, and we're gonna load the next color, which is Templar Blue in this case, or our mid-tone. All right, so for this stage, we're gonna be a little bit more selective. So we're gonna dial the needle in a little bit just so we have a little more control. And again, uh, I like to wear rubber gloves so I can test the 
color on my hand. I had a little bit of water left in there from when I cleaned it out. Let's close that up a little bit more. All right, and so this is the really probably the most important stage. So what we're going to do here is we're going to concentrate on the distal ends of the model. Um, so like the, uh, the feet, for example. And you want to just uh, almost spot apply. Um, you're not looking to you know, hit it all crazy and, and overspray like, uh, like we were doing for the, the base coat. You want a little more control here. All right, so another trick to, to learn is, um, one of the reasons that I use gloves is you can actually use your finger as a shield. And you don't have to be too terribly careful at this point. You just don't want too much overspray. So there are spots where we're gonna wanna keep the uh, the model uh, with the undercoat, the the color that's underneath. And again, we're concentrating this color difference, uh, the shade difference on the torso and the front of the feet, because that's what we want our focal points to be. Um, we will go back and, and re-highlight this, uh, you know, with just a regular brush and do edge highlighting. Um, and we do that to the entirety of the miniature. And that way it provides that um, kind of a unifying tone, um, but still gives us that shade gradient. I think I'm going to do the back side of the legs here a little bit. Okay. Um, and so we'll do the top of the gun there on the back just to make that kind of stand out a little bit. And the other thing to consider too is you don't want to, you don't want to cluster these shades too close together. You do want some contrast in between them. Um, so if you're trying to apply a little heavier, Right, jumped out of focus there. Trying to apply a little heavier, um, you can spray over the model. And that is to say, um, overspray the model, but so that the uh, the overspray goes into whatever box or, or uh, airbrushing um, setup you're using. Okay, so I think just to Draw it out a little bit, a little bit on the front there. So if you guys notice, we're kind of leaving a dark spot right there in the center. Even though in the real world, the light would hit there as well. But again, we're not looking for the real world. We're looking to make this pop on the table. So again, concentrate on the distal parts. Um, just kind of very much a, a global shading method. And I like to do the back of the feet as well, just because they, you know, they stick out. They tend to catch a little light. Um, I don't normally do anything on the back only because, um, you know, you're, should be honestly the only one looking at the back of your models. Um, if you're not the only one looking at the back of your models, you've made a tactical error. So <laughs> just, uh, something to consider that. And I, I, I just don't like painting the back sides of models. All right. Um, so that's the second shade there. And the real pop is going to come on the next step. So let me clean out the hopper and we will proceed. All right, guys. And we are back third time. Um, all right. So I've cleaned the airbrush. Um, and something that occurred to me while I was cleaning is I keep referring to this part here as the hopper. Um, You've probably also heard it referred to as the cup. Um, I just have always called it the hopper because, well, I mean, by definition, that's what it is. But, um, you know, most places will refer to it as the cup. All right, so we got the final color, ash and blue, which is going to be our final highlight color. Get that in there. 
All right, so then we're gonna dial our needle in a little more, almost to the point where it's fully closed. We want the most control possible here. So again, we'll test. Uh... Test coverage, okay, good. All right, so now, uh, again, like I said, this is when we want the most control. So it's gonna be short controlled bursts, uh, like a rifle. And we're just gonna go for the very uh, most sticking out portions. You want to go very slow with this, build up that color slowly. And we're going to go a little bit right down the front. Yep, see, we got a nice transition shade right there. Let's go to the back. Concentrate a little bit less on the inside of the feet because obviously those are going to catch less light. Um, so I'm actually going to really play with the contrast here a lot. And I'm going to hit just the top of the legs there using my finger as a shield. So that kind of gives a real cool light catching effect. Let that dry a little bit. So when I stick my finger on it to do the torso, it's not going to uh, uh, obscure it. Something else to remember too when doing this is you want to build the layers up very, very gently and concentrate them more towards the, uh, the leading edge. So you see right there how it's much, much brighter towards the leading edge. Um, and the trick, the whole, the whole key to this method is um, really allowing that contrast to show through. So you don't necessarily want to um, highlight or shade every single portion that you just did on the, um, uh, the, the earlier shades. You want that, that color to really pop out and draw the eye. Oh, there we go again. Wow. Let's hit the top of the gun real quick. Okay, do the top of the missile launchers. And again, right here, you guys notice I'm not having to mask it or use my finger to, to guard it at all because I'm over spraying into the box. Okay, I think that's pretty good contrast there. Uh, you know what? I think I want to go a little bit brighter on the ends of these arms only because um, I really want them to be focal points. That's good there. One thing I really like about airbrushing is it dries so fast once you lay it down, because that layer is so thick that it's just, um, uh, you can't you can't hardly mess it up, because it's dry before you can touch it. All right, so we're gonna focus a little bit more on those edges, those leading edges. And you kind of just want it to have a good 
just a good flow. So yeah, I think that's pretty eye-catching as it is. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do the back side of the gun here. Just kind of catch it with the edge of that cone. Um, to the top of the legs. Okay, and again, guys, I'm using a .003 needle, which is just above um, the .002, which is, I think, the smallest that they make. Uh, there might be a size below that, but I've, I've never encountered it or uh, used it. So, um, as you can see, I have very, very good control here. So, sometimes, you know, with enough practice, you don't even need to, uh, to mask anymore. there so I'm gonna catch a little bit of light um, and something else I like to do from time to time is the areas that are like I said uh, I mentioned earlier about the color flowing um, the areas that are are overly dark uh, like the top of the gun there maybe the top of these uh, um, are these armor panels over the, the shoulders excuse me um, you can go in and, and <clears throat> hit those with uh, uh, with a little bit of color if you want them to pop out a little bit but like i said we're going to go back and we're going to highlight everything with um uh ashen blue and templar blue later and that's going to serve to uh, to allow those to pop as well and kind of tie everything together and then of course give us uh well hell let's grab the the cougar that i just did and give us the cougar all right so this this method was used on the cougar as well um, as you can see the bottom of the legs front of the cockpit uh, top across the shoulders and all that were all done in the same method and then I went back and, oh, and of course the back of the legs you can really see it there and then I went back and edge highlighted everything and it tied it all together so um, that's essentially zenithal highlighting or at least what I call zenithal highlighting and uh, as you can see it took about what 15 minutes to do this to get it to that point so then after this what we would do is we'd go through um, at least I would go through paint the black bits so like um, I probably do the the barrel of the gun, um, the barrels of the missile launchers, or the fronts of the missile launchers, uh, maybe some other odds and ends, some little uh, um, details here and there, paint them black, or uh, real dark gray. Uh, seldomly, I'll share a little bit of a secret, uh, I very seldom ever paint in pure black. Um, nine times out of ten, I will use uh, this here. This is German gray from a Vallejo model color. Um, once you apply it and then apply a black wash to it, it is just a shade or two above true black. And then you can go back and highlight it, and so it still looks black without looking like just a gray that's been highlighted to look like black. Um, so it's kind of a neat trick I picked up along the way at some point. Um, and then I would give it a wash with um, probably... I would probably mix Templar Blue with a wash medium and maybe a drop of uh, black ink. And then apply that. And the end result, when we're all said and done, will be this. And as you can see, you know, it's nice, it's poppy. Uh, the highlights really serve to tie the whole scheme together. Um, and I'm only using, at least for the base color, I'm only using these three colors. I'm not mixing anything. This is all straight right out of the bottle. Uh, and it gives a good effect. So um, I hope this has been informative for everybody. And uh, thanks for watching. If you like this video, let me know and I'll, I'll make it a point to do some more. Have a good night. Thanks, guys.